Hey everyone, it's Robin, R. Island Crafts, and welcome to my studio. With Easter less than a month away, I thought we would go ahead and make a cute little carrot drawstring pouch. I think this would be fun for the kids or the grandkids or even us adults. Put some treats in there, some little chocolate bunnies or some jelly beans. It's easy for the kids to get in and out of with the drawstrings. And it's a super quick and easy project. When we're getting close to the holidays, it's nice to have quick projects. Four pieces of fabric, two for the carrot, two for the greens on top. Our carrots are going to measure six inches wide and seven inches long. And our green tops are both gonna be six inches square. I'm also using a quarter inch ribbon for my drawstrings and these need to be 16 to 18 inches long. I like to go a little bit extra on the length, somewhere between 18 and 20. That way it can be trimmed down afterwards. I find it just easier to get it through if it's a little bit longer, plus to tie the knot on the end. If you do the 16 inches in length, it's gonna bring you right about here, so it can get a little bit difficult to work it. Of course, you can pull it this way, then tie the knot, but I do like my drawstrings to hang out a little bit. So if you start out with your drawstrings a little long, you can always trim them back. First thing we're gonna need to do is trim our orange fabric so that it actually looks like the shape of our carrots. Fold both of these. I put mine wrong side facing. I have the folds to the left just so that I can always remember where they are. We're gonna do a little trimming on this and we wanna make sure when we make our cuts that we're making it on the outside where we have our two layers that are loose. We do not wanna cut on the side where the fold is. I line mine up on my cutting mat so that it's nice and level up here, but you can also make some marks on your carrot fabric if you need to. When we make our cut, we wanna go one inch down from the top. So whether you line it up or you just make a little mark one inch down, and I want to line my ruler up to my point. If you don't have a rotary cutter and a quilting ruler like this, you can just take a regular ruler and draw a line or anything with a straight edge, draw the line and then cut it with your scissors. But I can line mine up at that one inch part and then bring it down here to the tip at the corner. This is where our folded edge is, remember? So double check to make sure we're not gonna cut it wrong. One inch down, right to the point. Trim that off. That is your scraps and you can go ahead and use it for anything you want. So I'll cut this one right sides together just to show that it doesn't really matter which way you do it. One inch down and right to the corner. My green fabric doesn't have a right side or a wrong side, they both look the same. But if yours has a right side and a wrong side, we wanna have it right sides up. And then we're gonna take our carrot and with the wrong sides up, so we're gonna put right sides to right sides. We are going to line it up at the top of our green up there. So I'm gonna take this to my sewing machine and with a quarter inch to a 3 8 inch seam allowance, I will stitch down both of these, attaching the carrot to the greens. When I pressed mine, I went ahead and I pressed one of my seams down to the green. And I pressed the other one up to the orange carrot. Now you could press them both one way or the other or press them open, whichever one works for you. You can see on my carrot, I didn't do any top stitching, but if you'd like, you can put a little top stitching either on the green section or the orange. If you press them both up to the green and do a little top stitch, about an eighth of an inch from your seam, that'll add that nice little bit. I thought mine looked fine without any top stitching, so I skipped that. 
Next, we are going to lay our carrots right sides together, matching up the green and the orange. Because I pressed my seams in two separate directions, when I go to put everything together, these seams will match up and they will go ahead and nest together. And if you wiggle your fingers like this, you can feel that the seams are stuck together. If you press them in either direction or open, you'll just line up your seams on both of them. Put a pin in. Go to the other side and I'll do the same thing. Then you can add a couple pins just here and there to hold everything together so it makes it easier when you go to the sewing machine. We are going to be stitching from the top of the green all the way to the point and back to here. We're going to leave this section open. can back stitch here, use a 3 8 inch seam allowance with a 2.0 stitch length all the way down to the point. I like to stitch right off the tip of the carrot and then I can lift my presser foot and lift up my needle and then I'll start on this side and I'll stitch all the way back up and then back stitch here. And that'll give me an X down here and it'll allow me to just trim off that tip to get rid of some of the bulk. Or you can stitch down Stop at one point, leave your needle down, lift up your presser foot, pivot, and then stitch the rest of your seam. For me, I just find it easier to stitch all the way off and then come back. When our carrot comes down to a point here, we don't want to have all this extra fabric in the way, so I will just trim close to my point, but not super close. And I can take a little bit off of this corner right here. And a little off of this corner. To make it easier for the drawstring, I'm going to press my green seam here open. So you can either finger press it or take it over to your iron and press it open. To press it open, I just laid it down to where here's my one seam. I just moved this seam over to the side so I can press this with the iron. Then I flipped it over and pressed this. And then I came back to the center and if I made any creases, I could just easily press it out that way. I have a little point turner here to bring the carrot tip out to a nice little point. You can also use a larger crochet hook that has something nice and round. You want something that's a little dull that just won't poke through your fabric and create a hole. And you don't have to get it out to a perfect point. You just don't want to have it flat if at all possible. Now to create the top and to create the casings for our drawstring, I'll show you what it looks like from this side. Hold down our green top and we want it to match up with our seam down through here. So you can either match up directly to the stitching line or you can match up to the end of your raw fabric from your seam. You want to do your best to get it nice and even so that when we do our casing that is also nice and even. Put a couple pins in just to hold this in place. Carefully turn it right side out. And we're gonna take it to our sewing machine and I'll show you what it looks like when I get over there. We wanna go ahead and stitch our casing. And what we need to do is since we're using a quarter inch ribbon, you want to keep it about a half inch wide or three quarters of an inch wide. We're going to stitch one line and then we're going to move up a half an inch or three quarters of an inch and stitch the next. You can just use the side of your presser foot. You just need to make sure it's wider than a quarter inch so that your ribbon can go through. Now when I stitched my first one, this side isn't too bad. But if you look at this side over here, it goes down and up. So I thought it might be easier if I made some marks on my green section. 
so that as I'm stitching it, I can see the line, follow the line, and it'll keep me from wobbling everywhere. I'm just gonna use my Frixion pen because this erases with heat. It will be on the inside, but if you turn the carrot out, you will be able to see it if you don't use something that's erasable by air, water, or heat. If you use a, a mechanical pencil, it'll make a really thin line so that won't be noticed. You are gonna be stitching over it. I'm gonna draw my first line 3 eighths of an inch, and 3 eighths of an inch, if you're looking at this half of an inch on here, there is one, two, three lines. You can just go straight up to a half an inch if you'd like, or just go a quarter of an inch. And whatever measurement I chose, I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. Now, I didn't make any of these marks before I started putting this together because the friction, it disappears with the heat of the iron. So if I had made my marks earlier, they would have disappeared and they wouldn't be there for me now. I'd have to make them again. I'll make my next mark a half an inch up. If you're gonna be making a bunch of these for church, for the kids in school, for your family, for decoration, to give out to the kids and grandkids, you can always try different measurements on each one to see which one you like. So when you get to the 25th, you'll have already known exactly what numbers you like. I'll make sure everybody stayed nice and lined up. Let's go to the sewing machine. With my first carrot, I did have it turned so that it was wrong side out so I could sew from the inside and it was just easier to see that way. But because we put our marks on the inside of our carrot, we're gonna have to sew from the inside. Start stitching on either line. I'm going to choose the first line I come to so that way I can remove my pins and then sew the next line. Now you don't have to go super fast. Just keep everything in place. Your pins are there to help. Maybe you need to put a few extra pins in. I just keep all of this fabric out of the way and I'm only gonna concern myself with right here in front of my presser foot where my needle's gonna be. And this fabric can get bunched up in the back all at once. I just wanna make sure that these couple of inches here are nice and smooth. We take it nice and slow, we don't have to rush. And when you're getting close to this section, just go ahead and adjust everything. Go ahead and remove it so I can trim my threads. Remove my pins. And now I can go ahead and stitch on the second line. So nothing up here is gonna move because I have that first line of stitching. I just need to make sure the bottom half of it doesn't wobble in any weird direction. And I'm just gonna stitch around doing the same thing as I did on the first side. Poke my point back out. My green fabric has some fraying going on. You could do a zigzag stitch along these seams, along here, and along the bottom. Or if you have a serger, you can hit it with the serger, cover them up. I think for me, what they are, just a one day decoration, just a little pouch for the kids for some treats. Even if they keep them afterwards and play with them, I don't mind having some of the raw edges and the raw seams like that. My lines are much better this time. They're not absolutely perfect, but they are much better than they were. I'm gonna hit mine with a little bit of a steam from the iron just to go ahead and clean up all the ink marks on there. To make our openings here for our drawstring, we need to pop the seam in between our two stitch lines. Right here at the seam line, if we pop the stitching there and there, that's gonna give us the opening to put our ribbon through. I just take a seam ripper, just carefully. Once you pop one or two of the stitches, then the rest just 
are easy to get out. Now that I've gone ahead and I've popped the stitches on both of these sections, I can go ahead and put my ribbon through. So I have the quarter inch, I have a safety pin because that is what I always use to put my ribbon through, little casings. There are special tools that you can use, but this is what I do. Now what we're gonna do is, this ribbon is gonna go in one side I'm going to follow it all the way around past this opening so that it comes back to this side. And then I'll take the second ribbon and this one, remember I went through on the right side. So then I'll go through the left side, pass that all the way through inside that casing so that it comes out on that side. And that's what's gonna give me the drawstring. Now, if you want, you can just put one in on one side and just have a single drawstring, but most people are used to pulling the two and that gives you that nice closure. With a little bit of patience, you can work this through. If your safety pin is larger, you have to make sure it's going to be able to fit in through your casing. So when we come to here, we have our seams pressed open, so there is a chance that we can get hooked up on there. If I get hooked up, I have this little pair of hemostats. I just go into the opening and I find my safety pin, grab a hold of it, and then I pull it out. That way I'm not getting hooked up onto any of that seam allowance, and then I can just go back through. Sure, I just have a little opening there. Sometimes your seam allowance will get in the way. Maybe you have to go down a little bit further. You might be hitting a little pocket of seam allowance. And again, I just use the hemostats to find the opening so that I can go back through. And I wanna work my way until I come out into the same section that I went in. And again, if you're having any problems, it's easier to just find something to open it up. So that little opening there is ready for you and easy to get to. Now to keep me from accidentally pulling this out, I'm gonna go ahead and just put a knot right here. I'm not gonna tie it really tight because I'm not sure where exactly I want my knot, but I just don't want it to get brought back into the casing. So that's coming out the right side. So I will repin the next one. And I'll start in this way. You can go around this way, you can go back around that way, whichever way works for you, it doesn't really matter. Guess we're going this way. It's whatever way that opening is gonna let you get in. Come through here. Move that up out of the way, find my safety pin, pull it through. See, by doing all of this, I just don't want to take any chance of that popping through. So I have to be careful. You could put a another safety pin on the end of it. You could put a little clip on it, whatever it's going to work to make sure you don't accidentally pull it back out. Because then you'll be really frustrated. See, that was close. I could have pulled that out accidentally. Make sure you're holding on to both ends and fix that out of the way. Now you can decide where you want to have your knot. It doesn't need to be super long like this. I don't want to have it up close and I want to have my ends to be even. So I will just go ahead and put my knot right there. Make sure everything's opened all the way. And then on this side, you can measure it, so mine is an inch and a half, so I can try to make it the same amount on this side, but that is not very realistic to me or for me, but I don't think anyone's gonna notice if your knots are off by a half an inch. 
trim my ends leaving just a small tail and you can leave it like this or since this is the polyester type ribbons i can go ahead and burn the ends you need to be really careful i usually do this over my bathroom sink you can also put fray check on it or just leave them as is This is just gonna stop having the fraying and all the strings coming off and things like that. You can use a candle, a lighter, and then there we go. Make sure it's not hot anymore. And now you have your little drawstring carrot treat bag. So maybe you don't want it as a treat bag. I went ahead and put some fiber fill stuffing in mine. So now I have a stuffed carrot. So I can put this out on a centerpiece as a display. I can fill a bowl with them. You can adjust sizes and make different sizes if you'd like. Your top of your carrot needs to be the same size as the top of your green. So that when we put them down and sew them together. After that, you can adjust it any way you want. Fatter, skinnier, and such like that. What I like about this is now it's a nice stuffed carrot. It'll make a cute decoration in a bowl. But when the Easter season is over, because really it's not that long, I can now take out the fiber fill, put it back into my fiber fill collection, and when I go to store all my Easter things away, I can store this away nice and flat. So I have the fun of a stuffed carrot and I have the ease of storing it nice and flat as if it were just a pouch. And if I want next year, I can use it as a pouch again or I can stuff it again. I hope you enjoyed making drawstring carrot pouches with me today. If you make any and you show them off on Instagram, please tag me on Instagram, RS Island Crafts. Your scrappy word for today is orange if you're looking for more creative videos go ahead and check out this one here or that one there if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you enjoy what you're seeing please hit the little fiona flamingo down there subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell and let youtube know that you want to be notified every time i put out a new video thanks for hanging out with me i'll see you guys next time bye